Hello everyone, and welcome to this short Godot vs Unity video. Today we're going to talk about fundamental physics concepts in those two game engines. So when we think about it, virtually any video game needs to feature some type of physics. After all, even a game as basic as Pong relies heavily on that concept, since the whole point of the game is to use collisions to block and reflect a ball to the other side of the field. That's why knowing how to add physics to your games is a crucial skill for any game developer, and all game engines should make it easy to do so. So, how do Godot and Unity compare on that front? In both Godot and Unity, we can easily apply gravity to objects by making them rigid bodies. In Godot, we simply need to create a rigid body node, and then, beneath, a collision shape node to define the shape of the collider of our object. So that's the physical shape, and it may match the visual or not. In Unity, we have something similar by giving a game object a rigid body component and a collider component. Note that in the two game engines, you have both the 3D versions and the 2D versions of the nodes or the components, depending on the type of game that you're making. Once you've made your object a rigid body, you just need to run your scene to have it fall, cause of gravity. The strength and direction of the gravity in your scene can be modified in your project settings, and again here you have different sections for either the 2D or the 3D physics settings. Also note that in Unity, if you want to disable the gravity effect, while keeping your object a physics rigid body that typically collides with other objects and detects those collisions, you can make it kinematic by toggling on the Is Kinematic property. Now, if we want to have our objects collide with each other and block each other because of the physics interactions, then the process is slightly different in Godot and in Unity. In Unity, as we said before, we need to give our game object a collider component and ensure that its Is Trigger property is toggled off. The Collider component can use one of the primitive shapes, for example the Box Collider, the Sphere Collider, the Capsule Collider, and so on. It can use a mesh-based shape with the Mesh Collider, or it can even be something more specific with extra settings for your use case, like a Car Wheel Collider. In Godot, we have to make our object a physics body and then give it a collision shape child node. The body can be of different type, depending on the behavior you want for your object. A static body will detect collisions, but it won't move. That's usually what you pick for environment and non-dynamic objects. A rigid body detects and responds to collisions by moving automatically. A character body detects collisions, but it doesn't move automatically. You need to move it manually using your code by computing and applying physics-related velocities. The fourth possible body node is the area body, but we'll talk about it in more details in the upcoming sections on triggers and areas. Also remember that if you have a complex shape, it can oftentimes be more efficient to use an ensemble of primitive shapes rather than a mesh-based collision shape, because mesh-based collisions are harder to compute for game engines. To do this, you need to use either multiple collision shape nodes in Godot or multiple primitive collider components in Unity. Another important point is what we call collision detection, or in other words, what tools the engine provides us with to react to collisions with custom code callbacks. In Unity, this is possible thanks to the onCollisionEnter on collision stay and on collision exit functions, or their 2D equivalent if you're in 2D. Though be careful, because your pair of colliding objects that you want to detect the collision for needs to have the right components for the collision to be detected, as specified in this table in the official box. In Godot, we have an equivalent to those functions in the form of signals. Indeed, any body node has some signal slots that we can link to callbacks in our code to detect a collision and most notably the body entered and body exited. However, if your body node is a rigid body, you also need to make sure that you actually enable the contact monitoring in the inspector of the node 
and that you increase the max number of detected contacts. Of course, note that in both engines, if you start to play around with physics layers and masks, then you'll need to make sure that the layers of your objects are set up for collision if you want to actually create and detect this kind of interactions. But that's a more advanced topic, so I won't talk about it today, even if, of course, if you're interested, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be sure to make a follow-up to this episode on that specific subject. Parallel to collisions, that block the objects and stops the movement, another super common physics-related concept is that of triggers, or special areas, that let you react to the entry or the exit of objects in specific zones of your scenes. In Unity, turning a collider into a trigger is as simple as toggling on the is trigger property. Then instead of using the on collision callbacks, we just use the on trigger ones and we instantly detect any physics object that enters, stays or exits our zone without actually blocking its movement. In Godot, the trick is to switch our body type to an area body. This way, the collision shape is used to define the shape of the trigger zone, but there is no collision and blocking anymore. To detect and react to the entry or exit of other bodies, we can reuse the body-related signals like before, and if we want to detect other areas, we can use the area entered and area exited ones to spot interactions with other area body nodes. Note that in Godot, areas actually are a bit more powerful since they can also be used to change the influence of gravity on the bodies inside it or route the audio to specific buses to apply some sound effect. For example, you could create some strange alien underworld that has a reversed gravity and that has echoey sounds everywhere. But anyway, here you go. You now have some basics on how Godot and Unity compare in terms of fundamental physics concepts. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment with ideas of Godot vs Unity tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.